it's hard to tell when the first-person shooter genre was started. Games like Maze War from 1974 certainly look the part, but don't play anything like the FPSs we know of today. Most people agree that the godfather of the genre is Doom. Released in 1993, Doom was so successful that it's the only game in history that could claim it was installed on more computers than Microsoft Windows. And such was Doom's influence that it created a whole new genre, the Doom clone. With the gameplay style imprinted on everything from Star Wars to breakfast cereals, the market was being flooded with Doom clones, and the whole genre was becoming tired and stale. While some companies were still advancing the arena shooter genre with games like Quake and Unreal, a new subgenre of FPS was beginning to crop up, the cinematic shooter. Games like Half-Life and Medal of Honor put the player in the shoes of a single character who plays a role in a narrative that surrounds them. So at the turn of the millennia, it seemed that the FPS genre was going to be split into two, arena combat and single player narrative. But in 2001, a game came along that combined these two subgenres and became one of the greatest FPS franchises of all time. Released on November 15, 2001, Halo was an instant smash hit and within five months of its release had sold over 1 million copies, making it the fastest selling video game since Doom. It wasn't just a success for Bungie, it was a huge success for Microsoft who got the exclusive rights to the game for the original Xbox. Halo was the very definition of a system seller. Within the first two months of the game's release, it was sold alongside 50% of all Xboxes. Halo was also received incredibly well by critics with a Metacritic average of 97. The game is considered near perfect and can be found extremely high on people's top games for the original Xbox alongside its sequel. Halo was a revolution in the first-person shooter world, a game that took the grizzled space marines and bloodthirsty aliens from Quake and the cinematic sweeping stories and boots-on-the-ground gameplay of Medal of Honor and combined the two to create a shooter that proved that first-person shooters were here to stay. The entire game is a combination of the old and the new, the arcade and realistic, a blending of generations. This blend is what allowed Halo to have such a wide appeal and reach such critical heights. For example, the setting of Halo takes place within our own universe, which keeps the game realistic, yet it takes place thousands of years in the future, which allows the characters to have ridiculous things like hyperspeed, laser cannons, and giant rings of technology floating in space. The player character was purposefully created to be a blend of the old and new. In many ways, he was just a soldier, like the one played in Medal of Honor, but he was a soldier who was a one-man killing machine, a super soldier. This is it, Halo's control center. Halo didn't just take these two FPS subgenres and smash them together and became an instant success, it had its own innovations that made it legendary. One of these innovations was the story. In the 90s, the majority of first-person shooter games had no story, or a story that focused mainly on the protagonist's journey. Halo took that concept and brought it further. While the story mainly focused on the Master Chief's journey, it also had history and lore and entire subplots about corruption, religious fundamentalism, and humanity. Come here, you mother <laughs> Oh, this is it, baby. Hold me. 
Halo's sweeping, epic space opera is an emotional roller coaster of a story with lives lost and allies made. The story in Halo is one that matches some of the best science fiction films and proved to society that video games could have narratives just as strong as any book or film. The gameplay of Halo was also one of the most significant elements of its success. It strikes a perfect balance between being immersive and fun. While you do have a regenerating shield, you don't have regenerating health, meaning that you have to take cover from enemies after your shield is broken. But the shield recharges pretty fast, so you can hop back out into the firefight pretty quickly. The two gun system also adds to this blend of old and new schools. In realistic FPS games, only having two weapons was standard as it made for a more authentic experience, but Halo uses this realistic system as a way to use very unrealistic weapons. Weapons like the Needler, the Fuel Rod Gun, and the Flamethrower all harken back to the early 90s arena shooters, keeping the old school dream alive. One of Halo's most game-changing elements of its gameplay was the third-person vehicle segments. The variety and uniqueness of the different vehicles made them a joy to drive and allowed the player to tackle different fights from different angles. The twin stick control scheme was also a pleasure to use. Easy to learn but hard to master, these controls made each vehicle unique to drive. The Warthog was a decently fast jeep but was very drift prone, while the Scorpion tank trudges along slowly but is actually quite maneuverable. The ghost can go incredibly fast in straight lines and stop on a dime, but it doesn't take corners very well. And the Banshee? Well, the Banshee is just fucking awesome. Halo was one of the first FPSs in gaming to add driving to its mechanics, and its influence is seen in many modern day games, with vehicle segments almost being standard practice. Halo was so popular that it extended itself beyond gaming to become a cultural icon. Master Chief is now one of the most recognized characters in gaming and has come to represent gaming itself. Head to any entertainment convention and you're sure to find someone donning the armor of their favorite Spartan super soldier. With things like extended universe books and live action film series, Halo has become entertainment for both gamers and non-gamers alike, and continues to do that to this day. Halo redefined to many people just what an FPS game could be, and influenced the next decade of not only games, but entertainment as a whole.